It's just people like him don't get to say what's legit and what's not legit because yeah. you just don't have the, the experience or knowledge or uh, the background to do it. Hey guys, today's video is sort of a response video to Rokus, the martial arts journey guy. He put out a video recently titled, Was I Wrong About Aikido? And he actually referenced my guest, Remy. Remy, by the way, is very legit. He happens to be a security specialist and a bodyguard and is a second damn black belt in Aikido, has his own dojo in Norway. He's got his own YouTube channel too. Check it out. It's called Martial Arts One on One. I'll link in the description below. He showcases a lot of cool Aikido techniques, etc. So make sure to check that out. Subscribe to his channel. In addition to this being a response video to Rokus, Remy really gets in deep and talks about why a lot of Aikido is ineffective, including Rokus's, and why Aikido shouldn't necessarily get a bad rap. Because if you train it properly the way Remy trains it, it can actually be used quite effectively, which he does in his real life line of work. Anyway, make sure to give this video a like if you want to help support the channel. Subscribe if you're not yet subscribed, and let's get to it. The Martial Arts Journey Guy, I believe his name is Rokus. He's pretty yeah. popular on YouTube. Now, he's the guy that trained in Aikido for 15 years, and then, like, he questions all his training, the effectiveness of Aikido. In fact, he actually had a recent video uh, titled, Was I Wrong About Aikido? And he actually mentioned you, in addition to a few other guys, who seem to be, like, the legit people who can actually utilize Aikido in the real world, uh, which is a great compliment to you. But he did have a critique on your training. And I'll yeah. just quote him. I'll just quote him because I want to get your response. While the rest of the videos from Remy, in my opinion, suffer from the same issue as real Aikido, or as most Aikido styles, with the attacker stopping at the end of their attacks to allow the application of a technique on them. So what do you have to say in response to like his critique on, on basically some of your training? Well, Rokas don't know how we train. Like a a Everyone can find a little bit of a segment of video footage of anything and find something to critique it with. Sure particular clip that he's talking about the guy is coming at me and he's throwing several punches and it doesn't look anything like traditional aikido he hasn't done anything of that before he had his revelation so he did traditional aikido for about 15 years he did the katas and did everything like that and then suddenly he wants to try it out in a mma ring mma stands for mixed martial arts like you have to have a a uh, broad uh, set of skills before you put yourself in a MMA fight. Absolutely. Like if you bring only boxing to the MMA ring, you're going to have a hard time dealing with kicks and grappling. So if you don't have the understanding that if you're bringing Aikido, especially you're just doing katas, you go to an MMA ring, you're going to have trouble. It's just, it's common sense. Like, and then suddenly he wakes up 15 years later. Like what the hell have you been doing for 15 years? Like, you never sparred one time in your life. You never had one sparring. You never grapple anyone. You never had anyone punch you for real in the face. So you, you understand how to move and get out of the way and strike back or do anything. So, I mean, for him to criticize me is he can do it, but it doesn't hold any value because he's not – like none of us consider him to be legit enough to, to even have an opinion on what's legit and not. So he did what? He did two MMA matches. He did a little bit of BJJ. He's a blue belt now or whatever. And uh, he thinks he's entitled to, like, tell the world what's legit and what's, what's not legit. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it seems like he spent his whole life training in that watered-down style of Aikido. <laughs> yeah, it's a kata. I mean, yeah. I mean, wake the hell up. It's a, it's a goddamn kata. You don't bring a kata to a, to a fight. Like you don't do shadow boxing in an MMA ring. Shadow boxing has its has Pur its purpose, uh, yeah. its purpose, and the katas has its purpose too. See what people don't understand about Aikido and a lot of its purposes. Uh, I think is you're not really training techniques. You're training principles, and you have to understand how to use those principles when when uh, when it's a real uh, fight. You know what's interesting? Again, I think it's just that bandwagon people like to jump on because it's the popular thing to do. Let's just trash Aikido. Because if you think about it, like, why don't anybody just say boxing by itself is useless in MMA? Boxing, in addition to other stuff, is obviously great. But like you've seen years ago when James Tony fought um, Randy Couture, Randy Couture just, James Tony is a heavyweight champ, ex heavyweight champ. 
Randy Couture knows I'm not going to box this guy. I'm not going to win boxing this guy. I'm going to take this guy down. That fight was over in what, maybe like a minute or two. So it's just funny that Aikido gets the bad rap. Oh, well, it doesn't work. You can't use it in MMA. It's like, well, you can't just use boxing in MMA by itself in a vacuum, but people always just like want to put Aikido in a vacuum and assume that the guys who do Aikido don't do anything else. Whereas you, you got your boxing, you got your Wing Chun. I seen you throw kicks. It's just like, I don't know why people just want to put it in a vacuum against all other like mixed martial arts. It just seems unfair, you know. It, it I don't know. It's yeah. just that bandwagon. Like I, I don't think, think people want to jump on. I it. agree with you. Excellent points. I think it's easier for people to see boxing and you can you can strike and you can do damage and you can block and you can move. It's easier to become uh, effective with boxing or striking arts than, for example, Aikido. Mm -hmm. Now, I do agree with a lot of the criticism towards Aikido and its training methods. It's 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 a lot of terrible training uh, methods around uh, regarding Aikido. I do agree with that. Now, MMA is MMA. Boxing is boxing. And it's so what are we talking about? We're talking about fighting or if we do an MMA, we do an MMA. You need to train for that. Sure. If you're doing Aikido or you're doing other martial arts, you need to know why you're doing it. Like I do Aikido because it just feels better for me. I feel more awake um it uh it makes me grow a little bit more mentally as well as not only like training physically and uh i train as much as possible like i i've trained submission wrestling a little bit a little bit of bjj a little bit of you know striking arts boxing wing chun different so that i i do have an understanding of the different fighting uh aspects out there and obviously I, i've been in a scrap or two uh on the street which is also uh you know a scenario for itself which where anything goes. So it's just about being open-minded, gathering as much possible uh, knowledge there is, and, uh, you know, learning as much as possible. That's what Rokas never did. And then he, you know, he has the balls to criticize uh, my training from that one video clip. Like the guy's actually throwing punches at me, doing combos, boxing punches. Yeah. And he never did that, like, one time in his, his whole 15 years of Aikido, like you never did that once. And that's not traditional Aikido. This is extremely soft sparring we're doing in that video clip, but it's dealing with punches. So you have to do it slow before you can do it quick. And I mean, um, yeah, like I said, you can find you can find a reason to criticize anyone. Sure. And if he's stuck to that narrative where he's going to criticize Aikido, then he's made up his mind already. Mm. And I do agree with, with the fact, like I said, a lot of Aikido dojos and senseis or whatever you call them, they train this fluffy flower power BS and they want to like completely uh, demonize anyone that, that wants to actually make Aikido work and have the Budo aspect of it, the practical aspect of it. They want to call them like, well, you're not doing Aikido, you're doing jujitsu. But if you really study Aikido, it's like I said, it has different fields of, 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 uh, of combat in it. You have the jiu-jitsu, you have the aikijitsu, uh, internal training, the sword, you know, the sword techniques, uh, which is all to deal with, with the deflections and all of that stuff, and the internal training. And if you really want to talk about internal, it's not key and hadouken. It's not like this no-touch BS stuff. Internal training is really training your body to understand body mechanics, where if someone attacks you on a line, you will understand how to deflect it. Even if you're grappling, you want to know how to uh, manipulate his balance and uh, use the, you know, the triangle concept and all of that stuff, how to get him down or how to push, pull and use whatever force that he's using against you um, to get him off balance. Like it's all body mechanics, but people has turned it into something more of a maybe religion or a, it's more like political, mm. you know? Yeah. In his defense. So I do at least like, how he showed some of your clips from that surveillance footage where you're using real Aikido techniques. Like, so that's more important than like these drills you're doing in your dojo as far as like, cause this is real world. You have no idea what that guy is doing. Not that you necessarily knew a combination, you know, the guy in your training was doing against you, but I do like how he did showcase. Okay. So here's like, you're one of the few guys who have video footage of himself utilizing Aikido techniques on real dudes in real life situations. So that adds a lot of credibility to you and to Aikido in general, in my opinion. So at least he showed uh, that. I do believe that Remy is capable of using his Aikido against resisting opponent. Yeah. I mean, he, he is open-minded to a certain degree at the same time. And I give him credits for uh, saying, you know, even 
asking the question, was I wrong? Yeah. You know, I give him credits for that. And, uh, you know, it's cool that he brought a few of my clips in. And he also wants to say that the reason why me and other guys like Dan the Wolfman, you know, uh, can make Aikido work is because we worked as bouncers, mm. which is also like a plus. You get to use it in real life. Sure. But we, all, we already tried Aikido in the dojo and elsewhere. Like we were trained to make it work anyways. It's not because we're bouncers that we can make our Aikido work. You know, and Dan the Wolfman, uh, which you may know, you know, he's, he's been sparring and fighting UFC fighters and, and, you know, real good grapplers and BJJ people and black belts and like real um, solid fighters pulling off caught a guy and putting off different wrist locks and Aikido. And like he's been making it work for ages. So it's all about mentality. It's all about how much knowledge you got, experience. And uh, it's all about the individual. Because nowadays, it's all narratives. They want to put the whole Aikido in a box of, of uh, criticism. But I do agree with a lot of the criticism, but it all boils down to the individuals. Can you make it work or not? Because there's different martial arts there where you can learn effective techniques faster than Aikido. But it doesn't mean that you're a better fighter or you're, you're better at certain scenarios out in real life because you've done whatever you've done. You know, so it's yeah, all it, yeah. it all boils down to an individual. Yeah, it always comes down to the practitioner. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you take two Taekwondo guys. I mean, one of them gets his butt kicked in the street, and the other one's just a tough dude, a fighter who ended up taking and training Taekwondo. And even without the Taekwondo training, he's probably going to beat the average dude up in the street without a problem. But it's just like that practitioner who ends up, you know, training in something. But at its core, I think you kind of need a certain level of toughness, a certain like level of killer instinct to really win fights. It seems, I don't think Rokas has that no offense to him. I just don't get that vibe from him. So that could also be one reason why he couldn't use his uh, Aikido effectively. But again, he's pressure testing against MMA guys. So yeah, it's not going to yeah. work that I mean, way. Yeah. I mean, each his own, like everyone has their own path and uh, good luck to him. Uh, going down to, you know, training MMA and, and BJJ or whatever his training. Good luck to him. Uh, and uh, it's just that, like, it's just people like him don't get to say what's legit and what's not legit. I can say that I do agree with a lot of his criticism towards Aikido and the training methods and all of that. Sure. But um, you don't get to say that, you know, uh, you don't get to decide what's legit or not because yeah. you just don't have the, the experience or knowledge or uh, the background to do it. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a really good point. Now, you yourself, do you identify in general as like an Aikido practitioner or do you more identify as just a martial artist? When people ask me, I say Aikido. Okay. And, um, you know, that's, that's what I do. I try to become uh, as good as I can in Aikido. And I, I do train other arts. I do spar a little bit with friends. And I do cross train, but it's mainly Aikido that I focus on. I was taken in under the Tension Europe Dojo and trained a little bit on public sem seminars and some private seminars with Seagal. And it was really great. Then I went away for a little bit for, the, for a military job. But I'm not the type of guy that's going to like brand myself with another man's name because he's famous or trying to take credit for something somebody else has done. So that's why you, you don't see me uh, call myself anything uh, to do with attention Aikido or stuff like that. Now, so what is like your dojo called though? Is it just called like, what, what's the name of it? It's called Sunyata Aikido Dojo. Oh, and what is that? What, what does Sunyata stand for? Sunyata is a Buddhist, um, uh, it's a Buddhist uh, word from Buddhism, uh, which basically means being in center. Okay. Okay. Being in balance, being in center. Yeah, that makes sense. Now you have um, a boxing background you'd mentioned. And I've seen some of your videos on YouTube. Uh, you know, you throw some nice combinations. Also seen some of your like Wing Chun, really fast hands. Specifically on that Bob training dummy, which MTV pulled that clip on the MTV ridiculousness. Did yeah. they ask you or do they just pull people's clips from YouTube and just like, you know, talk about them? Or did, did you even know about that before they aired that? 
Yeah, I knew about it. Some oh, some yeah. chick named Jessica called me and was like, yeah, we find your clip. And um, we want to use it for a segment. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna use it for like make comedy out of it, or <laughs> what are you gonna use it for? Yeah. And she was like, no, no, we're gonna just we're just gonna use it for us uh, like a uh, like a segment for people doing things really quick. They had like a fast drummer and they had a, sure. like a fast whatever, and they had me punching really fast. And that host over there, what's his name again? The host over Jerk there was like guy or something like that. Yeah. He was like trying to be funny and like, uh, uh, like, like my punches was like receiving a massage because I was going. <laughs> yeah. He was like, "Yeah, can you get my back? Could you get my front?" He ran up on you to, to stomp you out, but you're just kind of, you're just getting kind of like, you're just getting like a weird soft massage. Can you get the back? Can you get my back up? <laughs> and actually, funny because he he records in LA, so I had a friend of mine who lives up there. He's like, "Yeah." You want to get this guy back? I actually know where the studio is. I'm like, yeah, that's all right. It was <laughs> funny, good. anyways. It's all, all in good fun, right? Yeah, it's all in good fun. Super fast hands. So when I watched that clip, I was like, I, I thought you were like, you know, like when you mentioned people doing fast things, like you look like a drummer with with your hands, like crazy. Now speaking of that, I brought that up because I was going to ask, in your dojo, is it more kind of like pure aikido, or are you implementing? the boxing and the Wing Chun when you train your students? Well, what I usually do is uh, we're two instructors there. And um, my classes is more like self-defense Aikido. So I implement anything that goes for self-defense. It's Aikido, but it's like if someone grabs you and tries to punch you or headbutt you or you're at the ATM at late night and someone taps your shoulder and, you know, uh, it's about to go off. It's it's aware, uh, you know, situational uh, awareness training and realistic punches and striking, anti grappling, a little bit of everything, but it's aikido. Okay, as the base with uh, almost sounds like some Krav Maga type elements because of all the martial arts I trained in, that by far the best in building like situational awareness and just things to keep in mind. Doing different drills like. You know, usually if you're like kneeing a guy, you're just focused on that guy. But they're like, no, you got to like maneuver this guy. You got to look for his friends, you know, all that kind of stuff, which obviously in a street encounter, it's probably going to more than likely be more than one guy that basically picks on you and tries to get in a fight with you or mugs you, etc. Exactly. I think what separates, uh, in my opinion, Aikido from a lot of other arts is that um, Aikido kind of trains uh, your your mental and physical uh at the same time. So if you get really good at Aikido, you really learn how to raise your awareness and you feel more awake after each class and you feel better and you feel good. Also, there's a lot to do with uh, getting rid of uh, tenseness in your body and stuff like that, which is which is all uh, related to having a balance and center in life. So if you're really, really good at Aikido, even though it sounds a little bit out there, if you're really good at Aikido, you should really, uh, you should be like a few steps uh, ahead like you should see um you should have awareness enough to not put yourself in a bad situation sure now sometimes that's not possible but if you really want to have high level like especially if you work in security and stuff you don't want to end up in the last part of a conflict where you have to resolve to uh using force mm -hmm. you want to be ahead so you know that's that's the tactical uh part of aikido where you use that that awareness and that communication that you train during classes for uh, something more, uh, I'd say, deeper. Yeah, that's interesting. Again, it always kind of reminds me of my craft training because, like, they'll teach you how to get out of different chokes and whatnot, and they're like, dude, if you're in that choke, it's already too late. You screwed up, but since oh, yeah. you screwed up, here's what you can do, you know? <laughs> it's like awareness, man. Don't get in that position. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know if Remy helped change your mind about the effectiveness of Aikido, by the way, and look out for future videos we're going to do together going to talk about what it's like to train with Steven Seagal nowadays and also the effectiveness of Seagal's tension Aikido. So keep an eye out for those videos and I'll see you guys next time.